be everything similar like today with the training is 10 o'clock, second training 6 o'clock with meals at the same time to remind you once again about laundry, upstairs and things. To give the floor to Sasha, who will speak about uh, something what two of us think that is really important for handball, for you know, players, athletes, and for the coaches, of course, to know how important it is for our game. Sasha. Thank you. So, guys, I know you are maybe a little bit tired, maybe. Not so much. Are you tired? Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, this, this topic we should, we, we thought it would be very interesting for you, I guess most of you do some sort of core workout at your teams or along with your trainers, so first question, what is core? Can somebody tell me? How you define core? It's connection between low and top body. Top Ali, please. It's the connection between the upper uh, part and the lower uh, part of the body. Yeah, we can say this. But what the definition of the word core is? Center. Cambridge English Dictionary. The basic and the most important part of something. That's why core training is so important for us. Because this is the basic and the most important part of the human body. Everything is going around the core. As Ali said, it's connection between the lower bar part of the body and the upper part of the body. It's connection between the limbs, between the arms and legs. Everything but no arms and legs is shortest sentence when athletes ask me as a coach, what is core? So, everything connected from the hips, about the shoulders, from both sides, from, sorry, three sides, front, back, and side. Everything is core. But what we mostly focus on is this region. Abdominal, groin and hip, on the back side, lower back, and hip muscles. These are the most interesting part for us as somebody who is doing a movement. So, we have back muscles on the back side that support us. We have a front side with deeper, with front layers and come with more levels of muscles and we have muscles that transfers the force from the ground up from your legs all the way up those are the muscles of the hips groin pelvic etc and most important muscle that we don't use a lot is diaphragm. Do you know what the diaphragm is? <coughs> what is diaphragm? Diaphragm. Diaphragm, yeah. Your lungs. The connection of your lungs. Diaphragm is the biggest muscle in the body. Look all of this. This is diaphragm. It connects ribs with the lower part. All of this is diaphragm. It connects to lower back. So when somebody has a lower back pain, his diaphragm is not working good. When we are kids, we are breathing from the stomach. We are not breathing like this. Does anybody here have kids? Small kids? When your kid is sick and when it's, when it's ill, how he breathes? Like this, right? Yeah. Because he is using accessory muscles. Muscles that should not be used during breathing. When we are kids, we breathe from the stomach like this. This is ribs. 
This is my hip and pelvis. And we are breathing like this. As we get older and we sit a lot, we don't move good, we are breathing like this. This is spine. So where is the most pressure when I breathe like this? Go back. So this is the most important muscle that we usually forget and it can be trained only by breathing exercises. How much of you do breathing exercises? Huh? Does anybody do? I mean, we breathe. We are alive, so we breathe. But how many of you are conscious how you, how many of you think how you breathe? How deep is my inhale? How long is my exhale? This is the way how you train your diaphragm. And it's very important muscle. Because it is connection between the ribs and all of the things, as you can see. These are the hip muscles. You heard about hip flexors, right? Hip flexors start from here and here. <laughs> so imagine if this is not working good, what will happen to this part? So for instance, Darko is the fragment. He is not strong, he is not working well, and I'm a hip, and I'm pulling him. What will happen to him? He will fall. He will have a problem. Same thing happens with the diaphragm. If this is not working, this will not work also. You will not move well. You will not be able to shoot well, you will not be able to move well in all sides. Who has better core muscles of those three guys? What do you think? Huh? Left. Who have best core? Who have better core muscles? Huh? Depends. Depends. Because core muscles have three functions. Force transfer, power production, endurance to keep us standing a long time, running a long time, swimming a long time, throwing a long time, endurance. Force transmission from the ground. So all of these athletes, they have good core for what they are need to do. So for weightlifter, he needs to be able to have good core control when he lifts weights. Do not fall down. That's called motor control. Motor control is the thing when your brain controls your body. He needs good core control. Runner, what he needs? Endurance. His muscle needs to be endured so he can be stable for a long time. Sprinter, he needs to be good in force transmission when he pushes himself from the ground. What handball needs from those three rows? All of them. All of them. For all of the core muscles, I told you. First one, when I, I'm a strength coach for 20 years now. I did sit-ups, crunches, until 12 years ago. More than 12 years, I don't do classical abdominal exercise. Crunches, because I read things from this guy, he is the world number one expert in the spine health and abdominal muscle anatomy. This is his word. Read this. Muscles of the torso are fundamentally different from those of the limbs. Arms and legs. 
a motor control perspective, control from the brain. Limb muscles create motions. Arms create motions, leg creates motions. Torso muscles stop or control motion. So why should I help do this? Does anybody work like this? Or like this? No. This part of your body should be strong and stiff while you move your arms around it. Then you will transfer force. Did you catch me? Can you understand? All of you? Huh? <coughs> Studies of athletic performance shows that function is optimized when power is generated at the hips. Power is generated at the hips. And transmitted to upper body. This is more for the coaches now. But when you put kids on the ground, five years old, four, six, four years old, and tell them to stand up, they will not do this. They will roll to the side, push themselves from the ground, and then stand up. Not like this, like the sit-ups. We all do sit-ups, right? For the stomach. But kid's brain is protecting him from this because he will injure his back if he do this too much. Not one kid can do when you put him on the ground lay and tell him get up. Not one of the kid will do this. We will do older, right? When you're laying down and we tell you get up, you will stand up like this. But not one kid will get up. Because his brain will not let him go, do this. With the reflex. Not because he's talking that strong. So, roll of the muscles. Do you know what this is? <coughs> tent. So, when you put a tent, does it should move or should be stable? When the winds are hitting to him and everything. Huh? Stable. This is our stomach muscle. This is core. This is diaphragma. This is pelvic muscles, groin muscles. These are back muscles, side muscles, front muscles. If it's working good, not any wind can move it. Not pushing, jumping, nothing will happen. So if you work the core proper way, it will be like this. Stable enough, resistant enough, and endured enough to support you while you are playing, when you are tired, etc. Second row, force transmission. Connection between the lower limb, when you hit the ground and you jump, Parts that produce that transfer force from the ground is this one. Like a gear shift in the car. Same thing. If this is not working, you will not shoot hard. You will not shoot fast. You will not protect yourself when opponent is attacking you. So you will not produce enough force. That's the main two roles. To prevent or stop excessive movement and to transmit force. What force should be like? Tennis ball. When you throw a tennis ball, it's stiff. Means it's hard enough. It's elastic. Elastic enough. It's endure, so it can last for a long time. For instance, handball, 40 plus minutes. An hour. Depends. And it should be quick enough when you step or slide to hold you and prevent injuries. That's the four things we need from a court. And that's how we should train a court.
Another thing I usually see with the athletes, they put a stick on our shoulders and do rotations, or they rotate legs, rotate from the hips. This is, imagine me standing here. This is zero degree. Lower back spine, your lower back. Have, all, have only this much rotation nail. So if I'm standing like this, I can rotate from my lumbar spine without making any damage. Only 5 degrees. But the part that I should be able to rotate is this part. From your belly up. So this should be stiff. And I should be able to rotate from this part. 30 degrees. Rotation to one side, rotation to other side. So if I'm not rotating quite well from please yaksha, right? No, worse. What is please stand? So for instance. He is not moving well from here up and not rotating good, he will compensate from here, from the spine down. So try to rotate as much as you can. So he did this. I am holding him now, but his muscles need to be able to hold him in this position. Because if he rotates here and twists the spine, then you get problem with the lower back, problem with the hip, problem with the neck, and so on. Thank you. Can you follow me? If you have any questions during any slides, ask me, please. Okay? For coach, it's also. So, how do you train that? A little bit with small kids, early. Can you do that early with small kids? No, because they move naturally. We, so, we see problem with the kids starting 13, 14 years plus. So when they're small, it's no problem. Yeah, yeah, but 14 plus, huge problems. How how do you train that? We uh, do specific. You them up, you hold yeah. them, and just let them rotate. No, them. we do a core workout, proper core workout, yeah. to make the lumbar spine stable, yeah. and we do thoracic spine mobility for this upper part of the spine. Okay. So we fix this part, for instance. One of the exercises is he will kneel, he will kneel in this position, keep his lower back and do only this. With fixed lower back and rotate only from here. Or if you do like stretch exercise, here I'm stable, I will just go to the upper part. Whatever. Okay. So that's the that's the part. So if you put your barbell on your lower back and do this, or you do too much twisting on your back, you are hurting your back. I did that with my athletes. And when I speak with some coaches, they told me, oh, I did that when I was an athlete, I, nothing happened to me, I just have two discus hernias, I just have lower back 20 years, nothing happened. Barefoot training. I like the way Coach Dragon told you to take his shoes off after the training. With my athletes, in my facility, whole training is done barefoot. Because the nerves that are on the foot, the innervate foot, are the same nerves that innervate deep muscles of pelvis and lower back. That's why foot massage is so good when you are tired. Because same nerves are coming from the foot here and down here. That's why you need to warm up bare feet when you do a gym workout, to try to do strength training bare feet, because you will have more benefit for your core stability.
and the secret relationship is next. Muscles are not working, biceps only, hamstring only. These are the chains of muscles that starts from the feet, goes to calf, hamstring, lower back, and finish here. Everything is connected. That's why barefoot training is very important. That's why core training is important for this, and this, and this, and this. That's why it's so important to, to be a barefoot. And that's why it's cool. so this is this is very important. I want to show you this. Because of this, you should not work out on the machines. On the strength training. Because machines are not using this. And body is not functioning body part by body part. So I will now use my biceps. I will use my pec. No, everything comes from the ground up. And everything is interconnected. Everything is connected. And this is something that changed everything in the strength and conditioning in the last 15 years. Lower back pain when you have poor control, when you have weak power, Transfer when you have not enough endurance in your back. Then this happens. So the question is, how should we train core? So does baby do sit-ups? No. Does our ancestors, cave people and wrong day, does did they do sit-ups like this? No. No. When we are babies and kids, this is how we prepare our core for walking, for power production, for force transmission. When you are laying on your leg, on your back, probably you did dead bug exercises. When you roll, when you crawl, after that, when you chop things, when you carry things, when you lift things, when you throw things, this is how we should train core. Not by sit-ups, not by, I call this, uh, buffering exercises. Right? You know, when you download something and it's buffering, buffering, <laughs> exercises on the floor for the lower back. When you do standard classical lab exercises, you have pressure of 300 kilograms on each part of your spine when you do classic sit-up exercises. When you do classic back exercises, you have double more, scientifically proven, 600 kilograms of a pressure on each part of a vertebra. This is not good. Does anybody have here a lower back pain? You? Anybody else? When you try to do this, did your back hurt? Huh? Sit up? When you have a back pain and you do this, does your back hurt? This? Because you are young and you still didn't damage too much. Use okay. Ask somebody your neighbor to do that. If somebody has a discus hernia and you ask him to do this, probably the lower back, he will not be able to do it. Or to ask him to do this, he will not be able to do it. For sure. So, this, these are the exercises we should not do. Because also with this, each part of the spine here can bend only like this. And when you do sit-ups, you do this. And then the disc pops out and makes problems. So how should we train core? 
Not with this. I'm not doing this for 15 years now with any of my athletes or this. Exercise to improve core control. Co I guess you will get these slides. They will get or no? Or we can send them. If you want, I, I can send you these slides. So you can just type all of these exercises in a YouTube or it, you will get a bunch of demonstrations. That's why I didn't want to give now. Core control, breathing. Breathing is the first movement that we did when we get born. That's first movement. We don't know how to use arms, legs, and we just breathe. So breathing exercises, search for them on YouTube. Dead bug variations, exercises from the back, when you extend your arms and legs, rolling to sides, Crawling, Turkish get up. Do you know which exercise is? Turkish get up? Just on one hand, Turkish get up is the most effective exercise for core, especially for you as a candle players. Search for it. You lay down on your back. I can demonstrate you now. You can stand up. So, I'm holding the weight. My arm, I roll to side, stand up, go in this position, here, stand up, roll back, roll, go down, so you have everything here, core control, hip stability, power, force production, if you do this, with a 40 kilo kettlebell in your arm, you are strong. Try to do this with a 10 kilo or 15 kilo. <coughs> Search for it. Exercises to improve core endurance. You did planks. You did side planks, I guess, all of you, right? Yes. How long do you take you whole plank? What do you do? Huh? One minute. Two minutes. Two minutes. One minute. Are you walking with your stomach tight for two minutes? Always? No. Stomach muscles work like this. Stiff, contract, relax. Stiff, contract, relax. If you want to do efficient core workout, do these exercises plank and side planks. 10 seconds, then drop down. Because after 10 seconds of holding a plank, your spine and your stomach muscles get out of the oxygen and blood. And they are not stable. So 10 seconds, drop down. 10 seconds, it's better to do 20 reps of 10 seconds than to hold 2 minutes. Yes, how long is the rest? Yeah. Just a couple of seconds. Just to re recover your breathing. Nothing else. So, best thing is breathe in, stand up in the palm, breathe out, drop down. That's the best, best way to do this. Also, side plank. Breathe in, breathe out, lift, hold for 10 seconds, drop down. Yes. The same person. Yeah. All test. Yeah. Just a couple of seconds. This guy, Stuart McGill, who is uh, the world's planks and side planks are his exercises. He started to do it, do them. So 10 second repetitions are more efficient than two minute holds, three minute holds, etc. Those holds are just for showing up because not one of us are. Try to stand with the stomach tight three minutes. That's what you do in the plank. How many repetitions in 10 seconds? How many? Is it depending how? Depends. I usually do them between 6 and 10 reps for a mere total amount of 2 minutes or a minute for a plank and about 7 to Four. 8 reps for a side plank. When a player is 
good train, train good. Yeah. It means six, six straight times. Yeah. But planks have variations. This is the basic one. Mm -hmm. Then you can have in plank you have four points of stability. Then you can take one arm and do three points. You can take leg and do two points as you improve. Still ten seconds. Still ten seconds. So if you are good in four points, take one point, do it with three. If you are good with three, take two points. If you are good with this, then switch to ball. Keep your elbows on the ball. Roll the ball, put around, lift your legs, TRX. You can search for a plant variations, there are hundreds of them. But do them in a 10 second manner. It's much better. Power of press. Do you know what power of press is? Those are the exercises that prevent too much rotations. For instance, Darko, please. Darko is standing here. Same thing you did today with the balls, but imagine him holding a cable. So I'm pulling the cable. Don't, don't let me rotate him to control anti rotations too much, to be strong in this part. Yes, sir. And this also for long no, this you do for repetitions. So, breathe out, push. Breathe out, push. Bird dog, you know what bird dog is? Not doggy style, bird dog. <laughs> huh? Bird dog exercises. Exercises for the back. This. Bird dog, because dogs that catch birds lift opposite. And Americans Similar in the yoga, dog and cat is yeah. in position. No, no there's no dog and cat is dog camel, camel camel. Yeah. Actually, but it's not this. So most common mistake I see with you athletes when you do this exercise, stand up. Is this how you do it most of you? Like this. It's not good. You should do only like this. Am I moving from my back? No. Only for my limbs. So keep your stomach tight and move arms and legs. Hip thrusts. You know what this is? When you're laying on the ground and lift your hips up on one leg, two legs, whatever. Also search for these exercises named like this. You will see dozens of variations on YouTube. Weight carries, very good exercises, especially for you, because your core needs to be endure enough to support you during the game. So take two heavy dumbbells and walk as much as you can. In one, in two arms, in one arm, overhead, in front of you, whatever. Those are most functioning, functional exercises for you. So we have exercises to improve core control when you get hit, so your body can hold you fast. Exercises to improve core endurance, <coughs> to support you on the long games and running. And exercises to transfer force from the ground up. Cable chopping. You have a cable machine, you, you know the rope for the triceps. You took rope triceps, push down. Like you chopping wood, lifting also. Search for those exercises. They will learn you how to push from the ground and transfer force to your body. Medicine ball slams, medicine balls, chest pass, medicine ball throws. All exercises that teach your core how to produce force and how to transfer force. Okay? That's it. Any questions? Please be free to ask anything.
you think you want, want to know about this, this topic, about core stability. There are no stupid questions, please, whatever you want to ask. How, uh, how to improve our, our environment? Breathing exercises. And like, like how? It's a little bit now complicated to show you, but come here. <coughs> So, take a couple of take a couple of deep breaths. Let's go. Okay. Now I want you to put your hands here and breathe through your nose and push your arms without lifting here. He don't know, right? Not from here. Just push arms. Breathe in. Yes. Now breathe out. Breathe in. Relax here. Breathe out. Breathe in. Relax. Breathe out. This is what you need to do. So, three seconds. Okay, now. Breathe in for three seconds. Now breathe out as long as you can. Breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, until I tell you stop. Breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. What's happened to your stomach? It uh, contracts. It gets tight. So try to breathe as long as you can. Breathe in. Three seconds. Try to do all of you now. Stand, just stand in straight position. Breathe in. And now. No, sit, sit, just, just, exactly. Yeah. And now breathe out as long, as long as you can. Breathe out as long as you can. As long as you can. All the air, even if you think you breathe out all, breathe out more. Do you feel your stomach muscles working? Huh? But which the technique? Uh, uh, through the nose or through the mouth? Through the nose. Uh, through the mouth. So, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Yeah, yeah, through the mouth. It's, it takes time to get learned, but I, that's why I told you, type on YouTube, breathing core exercises. It is what uh, the deep divers do, the free divers. You know? Similar like this, yeah. yeah, similar like this. So, try to, to, to type those exercises and you will see a bunch of them. But the main thing is you need to be able to use your stomach for breathing and to breathe as long as you can. So when you breathe out, you push your ribs down. That's how you make your diaphragm strong. Okay? And you will fix your overbed problem. There is also a problem with the shoulder when you breathe properly. And you can, you cannot breathe. Good. And you make rotation. You're just here. And I was working with the volleyball players and the handball players, and we just did breathing exercises, and the arm goes poof here. And they're looking like this. Why? Because this This position ribs, diaphragm position ribs. What's on the ribs that connects shoulder? Shoulder blade. Arm is connected to ribs and shoulder blade. If you breathe properly, your ribs get in good position. Your shoulder blade is getting good position. Your arm is in good position. It's connected. That's, how, that's why I show you this. Just to get a picture that everything is connected. Everything is connected. It may be confusing for you, but... Yes? I read a study about uh, was a scientist who had... Uh, he had studied the footprints of uh, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. And then Neanderthals were wearing no shoes, of course. Yeah. 
they said they had a perfect balance when they put down the feet exactly. compared to us. Yeah. We were like ridiculous. We were like a virus. We cannot exactly. walk probably. Exactly. But the Neanderthals, they walked like yeah. they were like a machine when they were. They, yeah. The balance is perfect when they put the feet down compared to us. We were exactly. like exactly. we are like total waste yeah. compared to them. How we work because of our shoes. The kids wear shoes when they're one year old instead of just wearing going barefoot instead. They should be. He said we should go back in time. Exactly. That's why I don't like, you know, the, the boot shoes for the basketball, handball, volleyball with the with the long lever. I don't like it. They kill your feet. They kill your balance. You think you are protecting your ankle, but no. You are making only damage to your ankles. This thing is very hard to, to be learned to older players who are used to do something 10, 15 years. But believe me, when the guys start to listen to me, they play five, six years longer than they supposed to. If somebody has a lower back problem, now they make like, you know what rocks on the beaches are? On the beach, on the seaside like small rocks, when you stand on small rocks for 30 minutes a day or just work on it, lower back pain disappears. So just you, like this. you prefer to walking uh, without uh, shoes? In the gym, yes, but you cannot walk alone, of course. But on the beach and on the store, we have, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have now, you can buy on the, on the stores that have foam rollers, bands, everything, something called rock mat. It's a plastic that have like mat, uh, rock imitations on it and you can do squats on it, you can do deadlifts on it, so your control will be engaged more. So, um, anybody else? Yeah? How often should we work in season, this option thing? Season or season daily? Daily. Before the training? Before the training, yes. Before the training, just the short, slow, uh, less repetitions, for instance, four to five, just to make, make it a little bit engaged. But when you do it alone as a workout on the day off, then you can do more volume, more repetitions, but daily, daily. I do core workout with my athletes daily. Sometimes, some, one day I will do endurance. Next day I will do core control. Second day I will do fourth transmission. And we will just do some different roles every day. Athletes, players, questions by you? Huh? Yeah, you think now what this fat guy is talking to you? <laughs> yeah. That's it. And if you have any questions, please. Then I'm done. Thank you, Sasha. That was impressive. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of stories about the Afran, but because it's about space, yeah. about oxygen, exactly. more oxygen in it, yeah. more endurance, more power. Yes, exactly. Yes, please. Enjoy your short rest and see you tomorrow. Have a state of rest.